but it's about submitting your thought life, submitting your mind, submitting what you want, what you think, what you desire, what sounds good to your mind, silencing it and letting, letting it come to the soul level. When the mind is submitted to the soul of God, you're going to get the thoughts, intentions, mind, vision of Christ on a soul level. We're always operating on a mental level when we should be operating on a soul level. This is where the reality of eternity begins to display itself. Invisible. You can see it within. And it manifests outwardly and people begin to feel it. They begin to hear the sound. Their gifts begin to awaken. Miracles, the spirit and the wind of miracles begins to flow in. Angels begin to show up and shine and glitter with strength. This takes place in a heavenly atmosphere that you've cultivated, created, and decreed and declared and established. You come in the establishment. You don't just decree, declare, and the establishment is separated. You come in into the establishment of what you decreed and declared, and you walk in that power. Okay? You don't just have money over here. No, you are that money. You are that economy. You are that system. You are that flow. You are that power. You walk into that. All in real timing. And then you display that. Configure that. Speak wisdom of what God is showing you in that. Learn and grow and adapt in that. Cultivate in that. Different fruits and gifts and administrations of the Spirit in that. Then you discover an office, a location, a position, a ladder, and you assign an employee to that. Then you see the rise and the grandeur of that destiny that plays a part of your life. Then that stream comes down the ladder and flows into your heart. Then you beat with a greater pulse to God from a soul that you've connected with. Now it's two suns that have collided together, two forces and magnetic power that have come together. Now you attract all these things to that atmosphere. Now you're growing in value. You're growing in stature like Jesus did. You're growing in knowledge. You're dominating yourself. You're applying all these nuggets of wisdom into one McDonald's chicken box. You're taking all these nuggets and then you're applying them into one box and then you deposit that one box into a system where it breaks down the minerals and then everybody starts getting words of knowledge, keys here, thoughts here from God and people are being touched and changed and revolutionizing, okay, all where you're at, okay? Then you expand that, what took place, the experience through a teaching, through a sermon, through your word, through your voice and that experience turns into a crown and comes upon somebody else that's willing to listen and who can catch it. It's really about listening and catching what is being said. A lot of times we listen, boom, out the other ear, but you gotta listen intently, intimately, intimately catch what is being said. Then the crown comes upon you. Now you're in a new level of kingship, okay? And God honors you, he promotes you there, and he just puts his head out there and he causes you to come forward and he promotes you to a higher degree there, a higher level. Now you're in existence, right? Now you have ownership over different palaces, different realms. Now you are seeing things and now you have order, there's balance, there's control, and it's all in this perfect harmony of Christ, okay? We just released something on that one. All right, so Jesus, what is the next direction that you want to take? What's the next step that you see? I was telling God the other, I was telling God earlier, I need to know directly what you're looking for in me. And I need to know directly what you expect from me. Not a hundred million things over here. I need to know directly what you're looking for in me so I can give that to you. I need to know what person in my life is very critical and important to my now. I need to know, Lord, 
what are the keys you want me to use? How do you want me to use them? What way do you want me to use them? And what are you expecting me to look for? Holy Spirit, I need to have a desire for God's desire on my life and only what he is truly searching for. So I commune with the Holy Spirit and I replace my will with God's will. You got to learn to replace yourself with God's self. You got to learn to do that daily. That's one of the major ways to renew your mind. See, you can be carnal in your mind and try to renew it into greater levels of carnality or into deeper levels of carnality. And even though it seems good, it feels good. You're reading books on promotion. You're reading books on acceleration. You're reading books on business. Your mind is still in this carnal. But you, one way you truly renew your mind in the divine realm, in the heavenly way, in the Godship is by giving up your mind. By replacing, replacing, replacing your mind with God's mind. Replacing your emotions and baggage and darkness and sin to the cross and replacing it with righteousness, with Christ-likeness, with divinity, with eternal wealth, with spiritual life. Okay? Now there's a magnification magnet in that. And it produces a very heavy sound that attracts greater weights. You know, we talk about the universal laws, the heavenly laws, but there's an attraction. We got to understand the law of attraction. But we got to understand attraction to a greater degree. Not just if I do this, that, but there's an, there's an, there's a, there's a, an attraction. And when these opposites meet, see, a lot of times these opposites will meet, but this opposite because of fear won't honor this person. Or this person because of religion won't honor this person. So you won't, oper you, you won't honor that and you won't come into the plus. You won't come into the unification. You won't come into agreement when the opposites were supposed to come into agreement to form a substance, a power, energy, a battery that fuels this next level, that fuels this next dimension, that fuels this way to travel, that fuels this place of power and position of authority where the oil and the anointing and the spirit and the angels begin to move, that fuels this, that fuels that. And we can keep going. Okay, so I'm learning that. One way we learn is we see in real time. Revelation. Not just digesting information. That's a part of it. That's a piece of it. But I don't want the whole to be the piece. I want the piece to be the whole. So I can expand even further. If that which is supposed to be my servant becomes my master... I become a slave and I'm bounded in my own foolishness. Cages are breaking and prophetic birds, which represent words, a chirp, a sound, a song, a symphony, a hymn of God are being released to spread it upon this earth. There are certain areas of my operation that I've noticed that I see a darkness in. But right now, in Jesus' name, light is coming out of that void. A new creation, new oil, a new pleasure, a new system of evangelizing, a new way, a new altar of devotion to submission and yieldedness to Christ Jesus before his knees, before his feet, I place there by the power and the hand of the living God. I exercise strategy. I exercise memory. I exercise faith. I exercise potency. I exercise the weight and the manifestation of God's glory. And I connect with all the prophecies that I've heard. And I claim them. The wealth of the wicked I commanded to transfer to this house, to this bank account, to this location, to this city, and to everyone that is connected to me. 
Now release its flow. By the spirit of might and power, I climb to a new height, a new reach, a new thought, a new visualized presentation of the Holy One. And I gaze and behold and extract from that vision, from that visitation. And I walk on this earth in a new level with God, a new way of the spirit, a new vault of godly riches, a new stream and substance of the Holy Ghost. And in this moment, I choose to transform. In this moment, I become a greater place of virtue, a greater waterfall of life, a greater stream of service, a greater product that's being exposed in the light, a greater version of Christ. Because as we speak, it happens. As we pray, it ascends. And we rise in the prayer of that ascension. And as we scatter seed, crops, flowers, plantation, not just a plant, a plantation of many plants. As we take over, as we cultivate, it's not just sowing a seed and a plant rising, but as we cultivate the ground, and we hold burdens and get more breakthrough. Now as a divine platinum farmer and the spirit, now we have lands of crops, okay? This is a different level and as we speak, as we press in, it's activating. Now the Lord, oh I love Jesus. We are getting somewhere now. Excuse me, we're already there. The Lord always gives me this excitement. Now listen, listen to what I'm saying. He gives me this excitement. Location. Where do I feel this spirit of excitement? Location. I feel it in my inward belly. Divine imprint. Go to the location and inside the location with your vision. I feel it in my inward belly, so that's the river of life. But the river of hunger and thirst for righteousness. Recognition. Now that I recognize what God is doing in that location, many, 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 many diamonds and riches unlock because I saw what God was trying to show me this whole time. So now I feel richness in my belly, life in my desire, completion and fulfillment in my intimacy, in my sexuality, in my harmony, in my heartbeat, in my life. Because I recognized, I get the reward. The reward is in your recognition. You ain't rec the only reason why you whine, complain, cry, blah, 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 because you ain't recognizing. But when you recognize, you become insignificant. And in that significance, you become an exalted. And in that exaltation, you become in tower-like status. Not house-like status. I'm talking about tower-like, building-like status. And your presentation, and your voice, and the way people behold your image, it's clearly seen when you walk. Whether you're around godly or ungodly people, it's undeniable. Okay? Now I feel the Spirit of God coming on me, in me, in a pure way. Not just a deeper way. Not just a heavier way. Not just a greater anointing. Not just the oil. Not just the fire. But a pure, pure way. And if I can attune to that purity and gentleness throughout my day, quiet my voice, silence my strength, I could get the Holy Spirit like I want to get the Holy Spirit. And I could feel the Holy Spirit like I want to feel the Holy Spirit. And I can see what the Holy Spirit is trying to teach me like I want to see what the Holy Spirit is trying to teach me. When the Holy Spirit really 
gets a hold of you. Your voice changes. Your sound changes. Your mind changes. Your thoughts change. The atmosphere changes. The future changes. Your destiny. Everything. It changes into that pure, pure, secret, sacred, holy, holy, holy place. And you start to whisper. And in that whisper are the secrets of the Rakadesh. And in the secret, that's the place. The Holy of Holies. The throne of God. The center of God's heart. You know, because God's throne can move, but you can only detect the radius or the sound wave or frequency of that movement from maybe a hundred mile distance, according to where you are in the spirit. But when you're right there in him, you get the pulse before it beats. You get the answer before he speaks. You get his next move before he moves. Now you're ahead of the generations. Now on this fast, I went through incredible darkness because you have armor bearers, intercessors, and this is all in the same and one function that you can do in your daily life. But then you have burden bearers. It talks about it in the scripture. You have burden bearers, holders of the burden. Now in this, these burdens, there's darkness. There's demonic assignments. But as a righteous warrior of God, you carry these burdens for people and you break them. You break that satanic allegiance, that dark evil beast and its fangs and its poison. And God gives you a grace for this. And you destroy evil wickedness and the plans of the devil off people's life when you do this you walk into a greater temple of light because you went through that darkness you walk into a greater light of Christ a greater light in your life a greater light in your eyes a greater light in your heart a greater light when you read your Bible a greater light when you eat food Ooh. a greater light when you stretch when you stretch the heaven stretch, when you think the thoughts of God emit like a signal, 15, 20 miles, 10,000 levels, 50 billion artifacts, boom. And there, instead of just rising above that in your own power, you sit back in submission and witness the righteousness of Christ. Right now, I just received a massive breakthrough. I literally just felt in this side of my spirit, breakthrough. The other day, I was sowing seeds for other people, okay? Another thing, and I was laying down and I just felt my spirit breaking through and I could feel the person's presence, smell their perfume, their cologne they wear, and listen to their, th and it was amazing. So, it's new to me, but I would recommend saying a prayer to the Lord. Father, make me a burden bearer. Let me bear the burden of people. Start where you're at. Let me bear the burden of people at my, my job. Now, I warn you, it's going to be intense. <laughs> because in, in, when something's new to you, you don't really know what's going on, but because you trust Jesus, you know he's going to take you through it. And he's going to reward. See, this is why the devil really can't have my faith no more. I've tasted too much of Jesus in my life. I've been through too much and Jesus has carried me through everything I've been through, but not only just carried me through as a wounded soldier, he always rewards you on such a massive level. He always rewards your spirit with so much that it doesn't matter what you go through on this earth anymore. This, this cannot come, this, what you're going through cannot compare to this that is always flowing to you. Okay. Now, when I enter that flow, and that flow becomes more real to me. And I spend more time in that flow. Well, God becomes such a reality to me.
to my normal lifestyle, to my simple lifestyle. When I go to sleep, when I wash dishes, when I cook food, I want to get better at cooking. So right now I'm asking the Holy Spirit to give us a cooking anointing, an ingredient anointing, a, a, a spirit. Oh, Jesus. Ask and you shall receive. Hold on. Like everybody's becoming a target for me because all I want is souls. Like when I see people walking, when I see people moving, like my whole entire spirit captures that person's life. And I start seeing these keys, these words of knowledge, this prophecy, I start seeing these things. So I know and I thank Jesus we're going to a new level of prophecy. Through vision and heart. That's swimming in the depths of that. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm feeling very holy right now. I'm feeling the holiness I never felt before. And I give God all the praise and all the honor. Thank you, King Jesus. If you ain't magnifying that name, you magnifying other things. If you ain't magnifying that name, you magnifying other names. I feel such a pure power in me that I could look in a direction and change the perspective of the person's mind without speaking a word or thinking a thought. Your eye, like the Bible says, is the tunnel to your soul, right? So as my soul begins to activate in more light, there's gonna be a greater dimension of overflow in my look. So when I look at people, they'll be chastised. The Father will discipline them. The Father will give them breakthrough. The Father will give them the food and nutrition they need just by looking upon them. Now if I gaze more intensely upon them, a greater intensity of the light of Christ will flow to that person. So there are certain intensities, there's certain demands, there's certain expectations, there's certain things God desires for specific people. And when I can see them all in one stream and activate them all in one touch through simplicity, well, we can get massive change in our economy. We can get massive change in our household. We can get massive change in our life, our work, our labor. You know, let's talk about labor. Well, I just felt I just felt a shift in the Holy Spirit. I just felt a shift and I saw a crown and I feel the glory. Now listen. I can feel God crowning my mind. I literally feel like a crown coming upon my mind. That's like it's like my mind is becoming crown ship. Your thoughts turn into crowns. And the crown represents a reign because you have changed your thought life the Bible says renew your mind. You change your thought life as a man thinketh so he is. If you think as a king, you become a king. If you think in multi-million dollar expressions, you become multi-million dollar expressions. Now, when you become that and you think that, see, this is our problem. We think and we begin to become, but somewhere in the middle, we cut it off by negative thinking, negative speaking, doubt. And so we don't stay in that becoming. And then we don't do and perform in that becoming. So we don't do and perform in that becoming. So it doesn't display and the outlet of the kingdom of heaven doesn't pour out in that open heaven where we should have so much wealth, so much success, so much power. We don't even know what to do with it all. Doesn't unlock there because somehow, we have not gotten to where the location of that open heaven is okay in ourselves not out there not 10 years down the line but right here right now this is the greatest moment of our life if you never learn oh, I'm feeling good see the Lord's rewarding right now he's showing me right now like Look, 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 I'm going through these caves, all this darkness, and I, it's muddy, it's slippery, there's serpents in the walls, but the Lord's proud of me because you trust me, you trust me, and your trust can't be tampered with. You have a trust from me through experience that is not able to be tampered with. Satan can't tamper with it. You don't move like you used to move. You don't get off balance like you used to get balance. Your trust has extended. I've intensified it with my fire. I've purified it, and now you purely trust in me. And now, because of that, I'm going to open my heart and my garment and my robe, and I'm going to take you to the secret and holy place, and you're going to eat from me, and there you're going to adore me.
You're going to be madly in love. You're going to fall in love with me so much, you're going to drown in me. You're going to be drunk off me. Okay. That's Jesus talking. Yes! The sword and the hammer of God upon our life has intensified. We shall triumph and do valiantly through our Lord and our God. You know, let's talk about David. And let's do, okay, I can see all these things breaking in my mind. Because, son, you are willing to go through suffering and willing to go through darkness for other people. I'm going to reward you. I'm going to bless you when you least expect it. I'm going to touch you when you don't even feel it. I'm going to rain on you when you don't even see the droplets. I'm gonna shine on you when you can't even detect the sun. Now, now, okay, let's go, let's go, come on, come on. I feel the spirit pouring out. I don't feel God's spirit just moving. I feel it pouring out, there's a difference. You know, I feel the spirit of God manifesting, moving. You know, I'm learning that, but what I'm learning now is, oh Jesus, I'm learning that, I'm, I'm learning the, when the spirit pours out. It's a different when the Holy Spirit starts flowing, the Holy Spirit manifests, the Holy Spirit breaks out, but the spirit just starts pouring out. And I can just feel just pouring out right now. I can literally see just like a waterfall, Niagara Waterfalls, or just something like whatever that place is where they skate down that big hill and there's this massive drop and these waters pouring out, okay? So that's good, that's good, that's good. No, no, no. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No, I'm not stopping that video. I gotta let that thing play because... Okay. Okay. And then... The Lord has shown me how to do a greater expression through childlikeness. He said, see, when you go to your job, there's a certain time and you haven't been catching my drift. You haven't been catching my move. Therefore, you haven't been walking in a greater level of power and authority and signs, wonders and miracles, etc., etc. We could go on and I could go on because I'm an infinite God and I can go on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But listen, and it's this time when you kind of get tired down from the rise of power and you've done the truck and you've done this. And so... My spirit releases, but in that release, after you've labored and you've worked hard in the spirit and the physical at the same time, there's a time lapse, there's a change in the realm where you become childlikeness. Now, what you've not been doing that you're going to start doing, you're going to recognize that, and the, this is the key. Before you would recognize, but you wouldn't recognize the importance of what I was doing. There's a time when I show you, but there's a time when I'm doing. So the performance is different from the preparation. So now you're going to recognize the importance. Therefore, you're going to grasp it. And you're going to allow childlikeness to clothe you in absolute vulnerability. See, you kept trying to cover up your vulnerability because you wanted to be strong in me. But to get stronger in me, you got to be absolutely vulnerable at the times I cause your spirit to open and be vulnerable. Now, there's a movement in this. There's a sound in this. There's God in this. There's the Son of Man in this. There's King Jehovah in this. And there's the economy of eternity in this. Now, in all these stability points, as they come together, it builds a current of a divine electricity inside of a system, inside of a store, inside of your home, inside of your building, inside of your business. Now, once this has been constructed by the angels that God assigns to this construction site of the spirit of a place that has been devoted and dedicated unto him, this electricity will be a divine eternal current that burns demons that even come near Okay, now, yes. Now we're going into the future. Yes. And then the Lord showed me earlier what I'm doing in your life because I was feeling some things in the past few days. See, the Holy Spirit has taken us to a place of maturity where you're willing to give up your, your nobody's going to pray, Lord, make me, you know, I just want to suffer. I just want to die. I just want to be, but of course not. But there was a level of maturity where you are willing to give up your own gifts, your own time, your own joy, and you're willing to take on the suffering of people. You're willing to take on the pain of people. You're willing to sacrifice your own joy, your own pleasure, your own peaceable time, and take on people's chaos, take on the demonic powers that are plaguing and possessing people's life and fight. And that is a state of maturity the Holy Spirit will get you to. And when you get there, God, God, God Almighty, the Almighty God that speaks and it is, that opens doors, no man shall shut, that shuts doors, no man shall open. 
you will see him, experience him, and know him in a way beyond just feeling pleasure, beyond just feeling, oh, I feel the Holy Spirit, beyond what the average man will see. You know, when Jesus was telling his disciples, blessed are you, for them before you and the prophets desired to see what you see, hear what you hear, know what you know, and they didn't. But you got it. Because mm -hmm. they was close to the king. You can chase power and be far from the king. Okay? But when you chase the king, the king, king, not just what the king can provide, not just what he can do for you, but you know he's greater than just every act and performance and everything he could give to you, you know he's greater. So when you chase the king, you enter into the throne, you enter into the tabernacle, you enter into the place of the Lord, the living God. And when you chase the king, you stay there. While everybody else is out just chasing money, chasing ranks, and there's nothing wrong with that. God is a God of freedom. What do you want? I'll give it to you. You wanna have power? You're gonna have power. You wanna have success? You'll have it. But when you just want God and you stay in that place with nothing but God, nothing but God, brother, you're going to begin to ask yourself, how in the world am I still on the face of this earth knowing what I know, seeing what I see, experiencing what I experience? So there's a distance in that where God will have to preserve you because as you possess more revelation, you become such a threat. So God will hide you from Satan and God will trick the devil himself, okay? And illuminate your spirit where the enemy tries to capture. Here, see, the devil doesn't understand because he doesn't have the light of the Holy Spirit. So he doesn't even understand his own foolishness. He can't even understand why he keeps falling. He can't, he can't understand because the light of understanding has been withdrawn from him, <laughs> okay? Now listen, the devil falls in his own, if you've never, Hallelujah. Okay. It's a very powerful word. Hallelujah. You don't know. I don't like when Christians say that. You don't know how powerful that word is. Hallelujah. Everybody in heaven screaming it. Okay. You need to be too. You need to be on. Okay, listen. If you've never seen Tom and Jerry or the Tweety Bird and the cat, it is a perfect display of what happens to the devil. See, you always think in your Christian life, the devil's getting over me, he's getting the advantage, but you don't see he's setting himself up for failure. All the traps he's using against you and the Bible makes it clear, the scripture makes it clear that everything he's doing against you is gonna fall back on him. Okay? I just saw the hand of the Lord come down and elevate us from this mountain, this cliff, like the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. And then the Lord showed me something earlier. You see, Jesus will meet you in the fire. He'll, see, a lot of times, you know, God's here. He lives inside of you. Okay, I got the Holy Ghost. I know I got God. I know I know Jesus living inside. But let me tell you something. It's different. It's a different when Jesus is moving in power in you. But when Jesus comes to meet you face to see, there's different realms in the spirit of your of the Holy Spirit that's living inside of you. You can enter into the state of meeting where Jesus will meet you face to face. You can enter into the state of power where you're just moving in energy, you're just moving in signs, you're getting the job done, you're knocking off demonic kings, and then you, okay, so it's all inside of you, and it's so exciting. But yet at the same time, it's such a fight. What I've noticed Okay, I'm loving what's happening now. Now I'm learning how to get the, the flow, like the pour out of the spirit. Before I didn't, I didn't really know how to do that. But after the Holy Spirit been teaching me, I've been practicing, God been disciplining, he been delivering me from my own wickedness, breaking old carnal chains in my own mind, setting me free from my own stuff. You know, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So we wonder in our life, 
okay, I went up, I fasted, I've been sowing seeds, I'm getting these rewards, these blessings, but there's this timeline of it's like darkness, like I don't really feel God, like I want to fill him in this time extension or in this time extension. I don't really see the Holy Spirit manifest in this extension. I don't really see the power of Jesus begin to flow. I just saw God's eyes and I just got changed by it. Okay, let's keep going. I just saw the eyes of the Lord and I just got changed by it. It's just red substance. This red heavenly divine smoke of love just hit me. And it's like some divine perfume that's sprayed in your face and you're like, oh, that's what just happened to me right now. Listen, so, okay. So I can use my eyesight and release the sunset of God through gazing, admiration, admonishment, adoring, recognizing, all in one strand of power. And when I learn how to focus my mind, my spirit, it pushes this out. It pushes this out. And then the light of the spirit realm begins to shine and that light begins to beautify edify people touch people break out things in people shine on people that's releasing the sunset of Christ it's an ability that has just unlocked within us Now, there is a focus point when I go to my job and it's like this and I have to learn to catch it and then it aligns like a constellation. God will have me focus on this person. Give this person a word of knowledge. Don't even just give this person a word of knowledge. Just smile and hug them. So I'll see the movement, what God expects. Then I go to the next focus point, the next person. So there's this divine constellation of connection and the Holy Spirit and it's like a weaving of the robe of Christ and it's this flow and his arms are just and then the oceans of who he is begins to flow silently, so slowly. So you thought slow motion was just on special effects. You didn't know that was an effect that comes from the realm of heaven. Okay? The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God. Another thing that God has done in my life that is new that I'm not used to. I remember I was on break at my job the other day. And the Holy Spirit was so strong in my job. There were angels in that place. I'm talking about the light of Jesus was there. Like it was amazing. But then I went on break and I left. And I didn't feel the presence of God even though I was worshiping him. I was praying to him. I was listening to music. The normal things that gets, that gets me amped up for Christ. And then I had to go back inside and I immediately felt it again. And the Lord's like, I'm giving you a closeness, a longing, a desire for people to be close to them. Like I a desire more than ever. I'm breaking you from just your isolated state of being. And I'm giving you this desire. And there's this mirror of fulfillment when you're close to these people. And in the past two weeks, or almost three weeks of my job, when I leave my job, I start crying. Literally start crying. I'm like, why am I crying? I know I love God, but it's because I'm leaving the people I love. Okay? And it's like a piece of my heart. The love I have for them, the passion I have for them, the zeal I have for them, the desire I have for them. Because I care so much about them. It's like I'm leaving them and I just want to caress them. I want to protect them. I want to hold them. 
I want to treasure them. I want to hold their hand. I just want to see their face. I just want to see them smile more than anything in the world. And this is a new, a new level of the love of Christ that's activating. And it is so powerful, potent, whatever word you want to use, it is so that and it quiets the universe, the heavens. And that's where you really hear the core beat of God's heart. And you drink from that stream. And you're so ravished, lavished, overtaken, intoxicated by this love, this dew, this fruit. It's so sweet. It's so nourishing. It surpasses all brilliance and understanding. It does something to your soul. And the fact that you get the privilege on the face of this earth in temporary time to share this eternal jewel is a gift and truth. KO in the Holy Ghost. Brother got knocked out in the Holy Ghost. Doctors, go see if he's okay. I'm seeing all these masks being taken off people. The more you speak my truth, say my name. The f I got angels all around me. Perform, perform. There's this, there's this simplicity and this gentleness I want you to find. The Holy Spirit is so quiet at times. If you, you know, you can pray in tongues, fast, sow seeds, but if you don't really go to that quietness, it's like the Holy Spirit's whispering to you. And when you don't listen to her, she, why aren't you listening to me? I love you so much. It's like, it's like, it's like your wife talking to you and you ain't listening to her. Or it's like you're very close to your wife in the bed. Y'all are laying down. The kids are asleep and she's whispering to you. Honey, I love you. But you're not catching it and you're not conversating with her. She would be very upset, wouldn't she? So I don't want to do that to the Holy Spirit. A lot of times I know that in my life, a lot of times the Holy Spirit will be hidden on purpose because the Holy Spirit is so pure, so holy, so gentle that if you approach her the wrong way, Jesus will protect her from being touched. Jesus protects the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the most, besides you, the Holy Spirit is the most precious thing to the Father and the Son. They protect the Holy Spirit when you become so reverential, so fearful, so in honor, so in awe of the Holy Spirit, Jesus will move his hand a little bit and show you something. There are experiences I've had that were so profound where I went into this vision. I was there physically, spiritually, out of the body, in the body, I don't know, but it's over for me. I belong to the Holy Spirit. It's over for me. There are certain things you can taste in this life from God, from the Holy Spirit. There are certain experiences you can have where that one experience, it's over for you. No one can take you away from the Holy Spirit. And I've experienced many magnificent things. And I don't ever want to dishonor God and not appreciate it. I fear God. My fear of the Lord has transpired. It has ascended. See, you want to ascend in power, ranking, and knowledge. You should want that. But really, on a deeper level is what you want. You want to rise in the fear of the Lord, in the humility, in lowliness. That's what you truly, on an even deeper, 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 deeper scale. That's what you want to rise in. been letting other little voices and heartbeats get inside of you, but I'm washing you from that, cleansing you from that, removing you from that, putting you back in that structure, back in my stronghold, my house, my table, because you belong to me.
putting you back in your throne, back with your crown, because you belong to me and my house. You will sit as a king and feast like a king, reign like a king. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The Lord is really wonderful. He deals with you and the rebuke is strong. But the hidden aspect of the rebuke is gentleness, kindness, love, and submissiveness. And there is a river in that flow. And once that rebuke begins to dissolve and you realize that you've changed from that strike, that ocean rises from that rebuke. Now you have this loving kindness and mature er level of authority you possess in your spirit filled walk with the Lord. And then you begin to touch people with this and you feel what the Father feels. And you treasure like the Father treasures. And then you really experience how merciful, pitiful God is with us. And that mercy comes, it multiplies in our struggle, in the strongholds we fight against, in the battle that mercy really multiplies. And we have such a peace in the midst of so much chaos and as we learn to use that peace, not just as comfort, but as a weapon, as a place of prophecy, as a place of unleashing our weapons against evil, then we find a safe place with supernatural power and guns and weapons that are gonna be released. I can go out to the battlefield they can shoot an arrow at me but there are safe places in Christ hidden places in Christ where you can strike from and ain't no demon can touch you no arrow can come behind you no beast no serpent can come in the grass under you it's a hidden visible place and then these massive hands strike from the heaven and they're like where's this coming from and the only thing they can do Retreat, 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 and get up out of there as fast as they possibly can. And you're on this quest, slaying dragons, getting the treasures of darkness, the treasures that the enemy's been trying to steal from us, and we take it back to our family, we take it back to our church, and people that are in darkness, we're going out and bringing them back to the light, and God is preparing this table of this heavenly roast and this heavenly chicken and we're just feasting on something 70 million times better than Popeye's chicken and we're just eating something better than just some human biscuits and it's just filling us when we eat in heaven it fills us with so much power and so much strength now we go back to that location 
where that demon kind of scarred us, but we're 7,000 times more powerful. Now when our foot stands, the demon gets knocked out by the wind and the weight of our movement. Now we won 15 souls. Now we're going to win 75 souls that have been in that Egyptian bondage bound by a dark king. And we go in there and we bring them out and we get stronger and we bring more to the light. And we silence these devils. Okay. And God just is on his throne rejoicing and celebrating. Hallelujah. And he's just excited and he's just thrilled because his children are coming back to him. And everybody's standing up. Everybody's roaring like in a stadium, like in a UFC Hall of Fame fight. And everybody's just cheering and rejoicing and overflowing and holding people and washing them from the evil and giving them a bed and giving them a house and giving them money and giving them cars and giving them the success. They're happy. The devil can't touch them no more. And we're winning. We're winning. We're winning. Like the champions in Christ that we are. Heaven is not right near. Heaven is right near. Not so far. Heaven is right near. Not so far. Your thoughts will take you there. And beauty and love is so fair. It's perfect as peace. Silent and sweet. Walk with me. The devil's under my feet. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. See, when you begin to proclaim the truth and what the Holy Spirit is thinking and doing, and you learn how to proclaim it in a stadium like Billy Graham type of stage setting, then you're proclaiming the kingdom, the gospel the city of heaven and it's just manifesting and when you proclaim it it begins to be established and dedicated and angels come down with flags and they put it into the soil and it's claimed for the king of kings and he comes and he's excited because you've dedicated your life to this place you've made sure all the evil branches were cut out you wiped it away you surrounded this place with saints of devotion and and you've made it his home his tabernacle i'll not let my eyelids sleep until i found a place for god to dwell and now you found a place and god is dwelling in your car he's dwelling in your bank account he's dwelling in your marriage life your sex life he's dwelling in your children's life he's dwelling in your heart he's dwelling in your feet he's dwelling in your thoughts he's dwelling at your job he's dwelling everywhere you go and you just spindling you just kingling you just shining you just raining you just filling in the men. And then you're filling him so strongly and so heavily. And everybody else begins to fill him so strongly and so heavily. And everything just begins to break in the spirit. And the waterfalls of heaven begin to rush in the spirit. And God gets so excited, he starts thundering. His light just starts emitting. He starts shining. Heaven's intoxication system. Implementing. You start feeling like you're five years old again. You start sliding down the slide. You start playing on the monkey bars. And you start rejoicing like a little kid all over again. As I look at myself through the truth, I realize who I am. As I look at myself through the truth, I realize who I am. And when I realize who that I am, I know him that I am. What does that mean, Brother Matthew? Well, it means when I know who I am, I know who God is. When I know who God is, there will never be another day of doubt, lack, fury, worry in my life. Because now I know. And when I know something, I've reached the plateau of that platform. When I know something, I've successfully completed the video game, the voyage we set out on, the mission, the movie, to the in play of credits. 
Now I know the finish line and the mark of what I've been called to. Now I can purely focus, triathlon, ride my bike, swim, run, go to the gym, get stronger, buy clothes, drive around this neighborhood and laugh, hang out with my friends and sing songs about God and just go there. A little pigeon, a little bird just singing and flying, just singing and flying in freedom. Nothing can stop it. We're just singing all the way to heaven. Because of Jesus. And then you know your legs represent the journey you've been in in life. So you don't even have to walk. When you're in the spirit, you can feel the spirit of your legs in the journey you've been through in one timeline. You don't have to go back to your photos. You don't have to... This, when you're in the spirit, you can see everything in one timeline, one flow. So I can look at my journey. I can see when I was first born. That video I watched with my sister when I put... Uh, whipped cream on my nose and my dad picked me up and I started crying and I can just see when I started skateboarding and I can see when I got into drugs I can see the devil and all the demons how they were behind me but God's angels were right here the whole time in this place and position and how Jesus was doing this and I can just see how the Holy Spirit was moving and touching and protecting and shielding me on all levels and God was bringing me to submission and he preserved me he protected me from the destruction that the evil one had on my life and that he brought me into this wealthy place. He brought me into such joy. He brought me into such love beyond words and he still got a work to do. He said, that's just a small, all, even though you feel like you've been alive for 50 years, you done been through hell and back 7,000 times. I've only, that's a small glimpse of what I'm doing in your life now. And so I have so much to look forward to. I'm so excited. I'm so thrilled about another day, another moment. Okay. The next word that comes out of my mouth is going to be the next level when God comes through, the next miracle, the next breakthrough. It's all in your word right now. So the next thing I speak, a new angel is going to come and visit me. A new level of heaven is going to activate to me. I'm going to feel something in my spirit I've never felt before. I'm going to have my family is going to be set free. My life is going to be set free. This neighborhood is going to be set free. Just the next word. God is waiting upon your word, your confession, your worship, your praise to release himself. You know, if you got a, if you got a, like, if, let's say if you have a wife, but she never hugs you and you never hug her, well, but when she does hug you, you just start feeling so much release and you just want to pour out everything to her, but she's not hugging you. So it's kind of like that with God. And yeah, I'm so, I'm so amped up because now I know the greatest level of heaven, the greatest level of God. It's all in my next word, in my now. And I know that. On a, I know that. So knowing brings about completion in your life. Wondering brings about confusion. You think you need all these things. You think you have to wait all this time for this to happen. But knowing gives you the full outcome of the pleasure and the benefit of a thing. Wondering, you got to earn it or you got to wait for it. No, but knowing, waiting on the Lord is a, waiting on the Lord is a spiritual thing. But knowing surpasses. I'm in this car, but this car is like in heaven right now. So, because we've infused so much of the spirit, this physical car is turning into a supernatural, living being, a drive, a force, an engine, just like our bodies are, the more we worship God and get in His presence, get in His spirit. And there are certain things inside of me I didn't even know were inside of me until somebody complimented recognized complimented so you always need to notice a person and just start speaking about what you see in that person and the more you speak about what you see in that person the more it'll be prophetic and the more it'll activate and make that person realize that there's things that they thought were bad and they didn't want to do that were actually God things 
So there were God things and they weren't doing, they weren't reaching potential in that. They weren't activating new levels in God. They weren't awakening cities and nations because they thought it was a bad thing. And they didn't begin to apply themselves to that and move in that level of their destiny. But now that they know and they recognize, wait a minute, this is a gift from God. This is a level of power. Even though I don't feel it, I don't see it. Now they're walking in a greater dimension of God. They're activating more people, blessing more people. So you've helped somebody just by commenting, awaken to their destiny. Walk in a level of power they weren't walking in. Just by your compliment, just by noticing and speaking. Noticing things and speaking those things that you see are powerful. It'll have somebody walk in by tomorrow, 6 a.m. in the morning, it'll have somebody filled with money in their bank account, filled with life, filled with joy, filled with strength when they were filled with the opposite. Just by noticing and speaking the words into their life. Coming from a pure heart of a lover of Christ. The love of Christ. Okay. There are thoughts that confuse the mind, but there are words that enter into the soul. And awaken the mind. Right? So I want Jesus to come and just feed us pudding, dessert, heaven's chicken. Because I'm hungry right now. I am hungry right now. hungry right now for the Lord I want to eat the bread of heaven see there's a buffet line right now in heaven there's bread there's chicken there's steak there's heavenly pizza Oreo cookies divine donuts and none of it's unhealthy there is no such thing as unhealthy in heaven Everything is light, substance, and pure in heaven. There's tacos, fajitas, oatmeal. There's a salad bar. There's all these desserts of manna and fruits, heavenly grapes. And I'm just in heaven's kitchen right now, and I'm finna eat. Okay, we finna eat. There's biscuits. There's a holy heavenly oven. Where these desserts are coming out of there's rice pudding Jesus is eating in simplicity all the saints are eating they're playing basketball in heaven they can fly while they play basketball there's flying basketball in heaven there's soccer in heaven it's all a movement and an expression and a rejoicing once the goal has been scored and everybody's in union. There is no such thing as these people are poor, these people are broke. Everybody's rich. They just keep getting richer and richer and richer. Heaven, we think when we go to heaven, all this stuff stops. Growth stops, acceleration stops, new levels with God. We think that stops. No. It just begins when you get to the kingdom, when you arrive. And, um, but again, Jesus told us the secret. You have to be childlike. Who will be greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Those that humble themselves like a child. So in childlikeness, like I feel right now, I feel like a little kid, I can feel heaven more realer than my physical life on earth, more the wealth in my bank account. There is no such thing. When you get to this level, there's no such thing as lack in your life. All the things, they're not even real anymore. That's what I love about fasting and getting to a childlike state of being. Because everything you see on the earth, it's not even real anymore. The only thing that is real is Jesus, his kingdom, and everything that has to do with the kingdom of heaven. That's what's real in the walk of a Christian, in the life of a Christ-centered life. Somebody that truly has made Jesus their Lord, not their servant, not their bakery boy, not their butler, like T.D. Jakes be saying, but has made Jesus their Lord. Right, let's keep going because I'm in heaven right now. I'm just floating. There's all these garments and there's these little children, teenagers, there's adults, there's elders. These are the ranking systems of heaven. Okay. But they're all in youth. The crown of rejuvenation is on the river of life. Okay. You can put the crown of that entire river and stream upon you. And people can drink from your presence. And you feel so much power. 
and it's just, it's good. It's so pure. It's so pure. You can inhale the purity now and feel it now. And then to stay here and absorb what I'm seeing, not rush it. Oh, Jesus, take me here, take me there. No, 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 just stay and absorb it so deeply that when you come back or you break your fast or whatever it is that gets you in your flesh, you go to sleep, you just, you're so radically changed. And you, when you breathe, everybody gets hit by the anointing when you breathe. When you go to work and just, everybody falls on their face because you absorbed so deeply and nourished yourself with heaven. All attachments break right now. All evil, lust, temptation falls right now. We just sit in the presence of the Lord and are changed by His glory. Just so lost in Him, just to the point where it's like nothingness becomes everything. Darkness becomes light. Pain becomes health. We're just transformed in this moment right here. Yep. Yep. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The gates of heaven open now. The power of God reigns now. All the seeds have been sowing. It's time to reap. I come ready to eat. I come ready, expecting, demanding the power, the glory, the honor of the God that I serve as his child under his wings to begin to reign in this place. To begin to shine in this place. To fill this call with heaven, with grace, with mercy, with truth. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I gotta sing to that name. I gotta devote myself to that name. I gotta speak that name. I got to eliminate viruses with that name. I got to set people free with that name. I got to extend my spirit and my understanding and my ways in that name. I have to flow directly from within, outside, inside, to, fro, in that name. I got to magnify that name. I got to get on my knees and submit to that name. I got to give God the honor that he's worthy of. I got to give God the praise and the worship that he's worthy of. I would like to do that today. I would like to come here and I would like to do that today indeed. Uh, yes, Jesus. If I ain't never made a stand for you, I stand higher today to represent, to claim, to honor, and to bless not myself for I am dead I died with Christ and I rose with him I resurrected with him I sat down with him I'm one with him so anything else is foolishness it's a lie it's falsehood it's robbing God of what he did for me on the cross Jesus 
I must get back to the foundation of praising that name. If I ever get to a point in my life where I become so powerful, so wise, so full of Matthew, so full of my own wants and desires and what I think I need, and I forget to let it all go, my heart will become hardened, and I won't necessarily catch it at the appropriate time, and a seed of the devil might enter in, and I may not reject it an appropriation to the time I should have rejected it. And it might cause a stream. So in this moment, may my memory be stamped and imprinted by the Holy Spirit to never forget to give it all up for that name, Jesus. Okay. 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 The excitement got to break forth, for the Word of God says so. The joy of the Lord got to pour out. For the word of God says so. I can't just be speaking in tongues, pouring out my bank account before the Lord, telling people about Jesus and nothing happens. No, because I know that my God is not a liar. I know he's not a liar. So I expect him to perform his word. Right? Ooh. Feel the oil. Now I, in my life, I got to have a greater confidence, confidence, confidence when I say that name, when I show up to my job. If I really want the anointing and the power and the mantle and the strength of my God and the spirit of what I preach and what I've experienced to really manifest, then I got to show up. I got to show up and I got to speak. I even got to think and live with a greater confidence. So by the Spirit of God, I ask for a greater confidence to unlock now. For if I ask, I shall receive. If I lack wisdom and I ask, I shall receive. So let God perform. Okay? Okay. Okay. Let's give a round of applause and let's celebrate the King of Kings. Is there any other king on this earth, in the heavens, in the universe, in the cosmic realms, under the earth, in hell, any angelic order, any alien being that is above the name of Jesus, that is worthy to tell God to get off his throne and sit upon the throne of Jehovah, Yahweh, I am, the Almighty, the Great Spirit? Is there? No, there's not. Because there's only one God and beside him there is no other. He makes it clear. Okay. So I come today to pull upon my heavenly father. You know, God likes it on a personalized level when I call him my heavenly father. I've been going through a lot of things in this past month. But what I go through takes me to where the spirit of God is leading me to. I might go through many waters, but I'm going to come out in a wealthy place. I might go through them giants, but I'm going to possess the land. I might work at a job and I only make $10, $11 an hour, but all the width, all the width of the kingdom and the wealth and the riches of God and the power and the passion of eternal life is there. And I reign there in my kingdom. Right? Right? You better believe it. Jesus Christ, you better receive it. Right? Okay. Right. There's a way that seems right to a man, but it leads to death. It seems so right. So good. So nice. There's a swimming pool. There's a jacuzzi. And you stay there to take your soul right to hell with the devil. Okay. It seems so good. And it'll take your soul forever. But look, that's when them deliverers stand up. You know, that's when them deliverers stand up. Don't ever neglect the excitement of another person when they speak according to God. For you have just rejected and spit in the face of Jesus as the Pharisees did all over again, right? Now these seeds are talking. I've been pouring out my bank account 
And can I just testify for just a quick second? It has given me more, all the money I've given, I've received more money, more wealth, more success, more impartation from pouring out my bank account and learning to be a daily sower. Before in my life, I feel the light and the rays of God just shining in this place. Feel it, feel it and take it and absorb it. You have to understand the different types of impartations. There's an impartation where you just sit and sing. There's an impartation where you just relax and absorb. There's an impartation where you strongly focus on one subject, okay? You got to learn the different impartations uh, to get the different manifestations of his demonstrations, right? So I feel a song in my spirit breaking out. Now I can hear the voice of the Lord and I can see clearly what he's been trying to show me. Because I come to the mirror. When I come here, I come to the mirror of God. I come to the crown of Christ. See, you want to go to God's throne room, but you went to an angel's house, or you went to Mary's house, or you went where Michael dwells, or you went where Archangel Zedekiel dwells, but you want to go to the throne, but you're going over here. So there's a specific and set location of where you want, where you're trying to go. You say, I want to go to God's throne. You go to God's throne. Don't go to that saint's mansion. Don't go to your mother that died her mansion. Go to the throne. Go to the throne. That's where I'm going today. I'm flying right now in the spirit. I got the eagles with me, the prophetic power with me, and I'm flying to the throne of God today. In this moment. Mm -hmm. Now, don't you love God? Because let me tell you something. I don't care how many devils are on your back. You got all these demons, all these principalities on your back, all this darkness you go through. But the moment you get in his presence, Every single time it has yet to fail me one time. The devil can tell you a million things why God didn't come through. But if you really sit back and you look upon your life, you can't say not one time God did not come through. You can you can, you can can name a million times where it didn't seem like he was going to come through. You was hungry for a few days. You didn't have enough money in your bank account. You might have slept on the street. But he came through every single time. And you know he did. You're either going to recognize God for what he's doing in your life or you're going to recognize Satan and what he's doing in your life. You're either going to recognize and give God the glory and attend unto his ways or you're going to give Satan the glory and attend unto his ways. Now you make that decision in your life and you make it now. There is a demanding power as we speak that puts a weight on a person's life to make them submit and recognize what is being said. Therefore, in that decision, there is no excuse. Because the truth has expressed and been revealed. I release the fire of the Holy Spirit all over that vehicle, all over this street. Okay. Okay. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. You know. I'm excited. I don't even feel like I'm the same person. I feel like Jesus is in my, I can feel Jesus in my brain. What I believe, what I know is where I've erred in my life, I've strayed away from loving the name of Jesus. Okay. So what God is showing me right now, I got to get back to that name. Okay. Whether it's in simplicity, whether it's in focus, whether I'm being loud, but I got to get back to the name of Jesus. Okay, Because it's very easy to stray from that name, which is above all other names, and start minimizing that name and start because you want to look cool, because you don't really feel good, because you want to find a way to win. See, the, the Satan and the serpent are slick. They're slick. They slither. Your intentions... You can be focused on God, but your intentional mindset begins to wander and go astray like a lost sheep, okay? And it's very hidden and it's very quiet and you can't really detect it because you can only detect it in God's light. There's things we try to detect in our human mind, but you can only detect it in God's light as a divine detective. 
You got your magnifying glass. But if you ain't got the light of God shining through, you ain't going to see those molecules of the devil, those molecules of Satan influencing your life. And that's been happening to me. But I repent and I get on my knees before God and everybody and ask if you repent and turn from your wicked ways, you'll be set free. He that does not confess his sin, that hides his sin, shall not prosper. But I confess my sin in this light, and I confess. And so the deliverance comes upon me. Now I'm getting breakthrough. Okay? Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You better cry daily. Now, another thing, my gorgeous, beautiful, mighty. See, you know what I love about Jesus? He ain't going to let you fail. I don't care how jacked up you are. I don't care how many times you fail. When you put your faith in Jesus and in his word and you choose no matter what to follow his word, to attune to his ways and to try to be the best representative of him as you can, he ain't going to let you fail. You might fall but only to rise higher. You might got weight on your back, but just to make you 700 times stronger. That's why I'm in love and I'm addicted to Jesus Christ. Because everybody all my, everybody else has failed me. Humans have failed me. I have failed myself more than anybody else has ever failed me. I have failed myself every time. But this God I serve has yet to fail me. He only propels me, accelerates me, excels me, promotes me, and he does it when I don't deserve it. I'm like, how in the world are you going to promote me when I didn't deserve it? I don't understand because it's my love for you. It's not how perfect you are. It's who you are to me and my love that I have for you. And that is promotion. If you see promotion in anything else than that, you won't catch it. Then you won't identify with it. Then you won't unify with it. Then you won't be the breath of that promotion. Then you won't breathe my promotion on other souls, which I need you to do. Now, you know God comes upon you, but then God manifests himself through you strongly. And that's what you want. You keep saying, I want this, and then you get it, but you still have defeat. You still have doubt. You still have depression. You know what you really want in your life? What I really want in my life is the presence of Jesus. Ooh, yes. I felt the sword on that one just slice. Now, we've been fasting, but this is a key. Okay. I've been sowing money. I've been sowing into the kingdom of heaven, into the realm of eternity, like I done lost my mind. Okay. And I am getting tremendous results. Now, what the Lord is showing me now, see, we go into the next stage of this. See, I'm mature in other areas, but there's other areas where I'm very immature at, where I'm like a babe at. So I need to learn to be that babe and let my daddy feed me the milk in that area and stop trying to be so advanced and mature where I'm not advanced and mature. And I be doing that. And I kind of slip when I do that. And I'm seeing that now. So I repent. <laughs> We're going to get set free today. I don't know who's with me. But I know God is with me. I know the kingdom of heaven is with me. I know I got angels with me. I know that those that I'm connected to are with me. I carry them wherever I go. There's people that I tell them, I will be with you every step of the way. And I mean that when I say that. So you can say something from the good intentions of your mind, but not from the spirit of God. And you said something, but you didn't mean it. Therefore, you didn't perform it. Therefore, that divine spark of just magnificence of overflowing in Christ doesn't really pour out in your words, okay? Because you said it from the good intentions of your mind, but not from the heart and the spirit of God. It's a different story. Another thing. Who's coming? Who, I, feel, I feel the spirit of God. Who's coming? Who wants to get blessed? I feel like John crying out in the wilderness. Who wants to experience God's presence? Who wants to experience the highest levels of joy? Who wants this waterfall? Who Come and get it. Come and get it. 
come and get it. Now, another thing that's been trying to hinder me in my life is a loud expression. You know, I'm very loud about Jesus. You know how you got Christians. See, you got Christians. They're quiet about Jesus. Look, look, this is the right hand. These them Christians, they quiet about Jesus. They're not allowed to, oh, we're not allowed to talk about Jesus at our job. We're not allowed to talk about it. And I'm not hating. Just listen to what I got to say. I'm not the spirit of God will come upon you. There's got these Christians right here. Here's the right hand, right? They real quiet, conservative Christians, quiet Christians. Oh, we can't talk too loud about Jesus. We might get in trouble. We might get fired. You know what I'm saying? They listen. They let the devil. And then you got them Christians that don't, they loud. They gonna speak the name of Jesus. They don't care if they go through persecution. They don't care if you threaten to kill them. They don't care if you threaten to fire them. They don't care if you threaten to take all their money. They gonna speak and they gonna stand in the name of Jesus. And then you wonder why they're overflowing in glory, reigning and rising in power, overwhelmed by the spirit and producing substance beyond Bill Gates and Microsoft and the spirit. And then you got these that are just broken, defeated, because it's the loud expression and the testimony that will cause you to rise versus those that stay diminished and hindered in the power, the spirit, the momentum of God. Now listen to me very clearly. Oh Jesus. There's like this, see the gods rewarding me right now. There's this loudness coming upon me, but in a distilled, silent echo of eternal submission in my voice. God is doing something to my voice right now. So I can see his hands like this. There's an overlap of who he is in my voice that is going to be released as I speak. Now, now, I'm able to handle a much more intensity of God and I don't feel it as strong as I felt it because I'm able to handle it. Once you get used to picking up eight, Jesus, let's listen to me. Once you get, before you start, you're only picking up 60 pounds. When you begin to pick up 80, 100 pounds, you're gonna feel it. But when you no longer feel it, and it no longer weights down on your back. That means you got used to that power. Now you can well. Now you've learned how to wield that weight with ease and gentleness. Now that is when a great, great, great dunamis unlocks within you. That's when the Father comes and sees your performance. You know how you love to watch. I know Kobe Bryant has passed. You know how you love to watch your favorite NBA players, Stephen Curry, everybody, you like you love to watch him play basketball. Well, the Heavenly Father loves to watch his children perform. Now, when I learn to fill it within and see the face of God in his expression towards my performance and the excitement he has within, now I've just cultivated that garden of life. Now I can go there and smell the fragrance of Christ, the beauty of Christ, the redemption of Christ, the light of Christ. And so, okay, we're getting somewhere. I don't even feel like we're getting somewhere. Before I used to see, we going to a new level. Before I would always say, we're getting somewhere. But now I feel like I'm already there and I ain't got to go nowhere because I'm already there. I'm feeling a different height, a different level, a different depth, a different closeness. The other day I was in my room and I just felt God and I just felt like I was close to his heart and I just felt him lean his head on me and I started crying. And then I started flying. And then I started shining. Because Jesus Christ paid the price. And that's my life. Now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. before I would just throw one football with my right arm. But now I'm throwing two footballs at the same time and I'm doing a double front flip and a double touchdown. I can see in the spirit a double acceleration of power according to the seeds that have been sowed and through my word will the harvest manifest before my eyes. That's what my father, my father ain't even showing me as if I'm watching a movie. It's like I'm one in the cinematic presentation playing it out. Ooh, somebody help a brother out. I got the Holy Spirit. Okay, now... There are personality traits of Jesus living inside of you. 
There is always going to be a weirdness. Oh, I feel weird around that person. But if you choose and you learn to go past that weirdness and scream the name of Jesus, be loud, you're going to unlock those personality traits of Christ and they're going to flow in your life. When the person that... I'm about to pick up the... I'll be feeling so much strength. I feel like... like okay, so I'm sorry. Let's keep going. So when you unlock these personality traits people are going to see that divine rhythm of who Christ is inside of you and they will have no choice but to be captured by it if a person can watch a simple old television show and be oh I, I, I watched all the episodes I, I'm on season two now I'm on season three now well when they when they witness the personality of Christ in you they will be captured from an eternal viewpoint and it will enter into the heart forever and ring throughout their spirit so we in Christ as disciples of the Lord Jesus the Lord Jesus oh God I love this this is why I'm so in love with God because even though I've been straying doing a bunch of foolishness he's bringing me back he I'm not bringing myself back because I was over there and he's bringing me back now and healing me delivering me setting me free and I'm starting to prosper Mm -hmm. Right. There are no losses in Christ. If you have devoted yourself to King Jesus, there are no losses. Okay. Stop thinking there are losses. How can there be a loss in the victory of Christ? The word of God makes it clear. All the blessings are yours. What Jesus got, you got. There is no loss. Okay, the Lord showed me something very amazing now upon my life that I needed to hear because I've been struggling. You know, a lot of times we decree and declare the word of God. We say, oh, I got Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? But we really struggling inside. We really defeated inside. We really don't know inside. We got all kinds of spirits and we don't want to say it out loud because we think we might neglect the word of God or we're not having faith. So now we're confused because the Bible says this and I'm not supposed to speak against the word of God, but it's not about speaking against the word of God. It's about being honest and truthful. He said that he desires truth in the inward parts, okay? There he will make wisdom known. I even had a vision. And at the Holy Spirit once, we're going to talk about it. I feel the strength of God flowing throughout my entire being. Okay. So the Lord's like, look, you keep thinking you've missed opportunities. You've not missed opportunities. If you are in me, in my word, devoted to me, dedicated to me, you ain't going to miss nothing. I won't let you. Do you think I'm a God that's going to let you miss something just because you aren't perfect in your stature, just because you haven't fully mastered the level of the anointing? You think I'm going to let you? I'm not going to let you miss nothing. It is I that perform the things for you. I will perform it. I will lead you. I will bring it to you. I will make sure you get what I have for you. Because for a long time... God was raining finances on me, blessings, multi-million dollar businesses and companies and all these opportunities and the wife. And it's like, I felt like, I felt like I got hindered. I felt like I got stopped. And the Lord was like, no. See, that's why if you don't trust in the Lord with all your heart and not lean on your own understanding, like the scripture tells you, you're going to fall. I'm telling you straight up because there's, there's things you're going to go through that don't make no sense. Somebody prophesied, this is going to happen in your life. You wait 10 years, it still ain't happened. They're like, what's going on? They prophesied you're going to have a child. You, your barren womb going to be alive. How, how is that going to happen? It don't happen until 30, 40, 50 years later. It's like, how is that? Okay, you have to understand. So the Lord's like, look, I'm arranging everything in your life. I'm decorating everything in your life. Okay? According to my ways and my time and my moving, it's all going to come about in the perfect moment. And the perfect move, and the perfect season, and the perfect vacation, and the perfect job, and the perfect wife, and the perfect ministry. And I'm going to strike down with my thunder and speak my word and my voice over that ministry and claim it upon this rock, upon this rock, upon this child, upon this son. Okay. You know what I'm saying? All right. So the enemy has been trying to quench my loudness my excitement is in my loudness okay my expression and visitation is a piece of that excitement 
that I eat manna and meat from the throne of God himself from that in, in my spirit, right? Okay. I'm seeing these things. You know, when you serve God and you're close to him, the devil really can't come at you like he want to come at you. So he got to sneak in the back gate. He got to do secret things and he got to plot and strategize in ways. But then the hand of God comes and slaps him. And he falls on his back. Okay. Then we rise 700,000 times higher. And all that darkness, this is what I love about Jesus. All that darkness we've been through, all that evil we've been through, all that wickedness we've been through, it turns into these levels and channels and layers of diamonds and magnificence and power and rings and, and fortified buildings of wealth and just this extreme level of knowledge and just this school and this power of destiny and the recognition of who we are and all this splendor and these emotional rewards and these divine rewards, that's what it turns into, okay? When you give it to him, when you put it in his hands, when you lay it all before him. Now, God's been telling me lately, listen, I have an expectation. There is a requirement and there is a demand according to that expectation. Now, you notice when you don't meet that expectation, you start to feel something and you don't like it. But when you focus, when you come to, when you prepare yourself to meet that expectation, there's this divine garment you feel, this holy white coat of me that comes upon you. And in that, you see all the spectrums of light in this warmth mending through you, right? So I need you to catch that you caught the place but I need you to catch the garment of grace okay we reeling in a big one right now 45 pounder white mouth bass we in first place right now and we reeling them in souls are coming the ocean is coming eternal life is coming Jesus is coming Beauty is coming, diamonds are coming, victory is coming, success is coming, and boom, we just reeled it all up. Now it's here. Okay, now it's here. Now look. If you want to feel good, you got to mend good. You got to meditate good. You got to... Mending your mind isn't exercising your mind and thoughts. We renew our mind daily. We die daily. 